There it goes. Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome again to another live stream of Astronomy Daily Live. It is two hours UTC, and did it again. Forgot to kill my. Uh, forgot to kill this one screen. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, I hope everybody's doing doing well. Yeah, we had a little bit of excitement uh, yesterday with um, YouTube um, going down. Uh, maybe maybe like minutes or so um, before I was going to go go live. I had it all um, um, set up, and I was getting a 500 server error with with the monkey and and all of that. Like, huh? What's this all about? And and uh, uh, yeah, it um, sort of sort of waited a little while. Gave it, you know, till I think like about ten after or so, and then you know decided to uh, um, to kill it. And uh, instead, um, Bobby was um, kind enough to um, play for some of us this week's. Um, music from the Hearts of Space uh, show, which, which, um, if you're not aware of um, um, music from the Hearts of Space, it's it's uh, absolutely fabulous. It's been going on. They started in um, San Francisco in I think the early '80s, and and I think they went national maybe about 1983, '84, '85. I'm not, not exactly sure. Um, and what it is, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, um, space music. It's, it's sort of, it's sort of primarily, um, sort of this, this ambient, um, you know, very voluminous sounds, you know, big, big, big sounds, um, complicated rhythms. It's, you know, it, it's it, it's kind of hard to nail down, and over the years they've they've sort of expanded a little bit and gotten into um, 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 ethnic music and 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 uh, world music as they call it, and um, and um, sort of the merger between the the ambient and and um, sort of the regular. Um, sounds and stuff. So um, do check it out. Um, HOS.com every Sunday, every Sunday starting at midnight. And I think it's probably midnight local time. So they're on the west coast of the United States. Um, so from midnight on Sunday morning to midnight um, Monday morning, right? So for an entire 24-hour period, um, you can listen to this week's uh, show for free. And what I do is um, I usually uh, uh, um, am not um, really in a position, you know, to listen to it right um, then and there because you know, working on things or doing stuff, you know, whatever. And and uh, so what I will do is I will um, fire up my um, uh, my um, one and only um, Windows machine um, that I have here, and I will just record it, right? Um, and then I can listen to it anytime I want. And sometimes I do that, and sometimes I don't. Um, sometimes if I, if I uh, um, see the, uh, see now, now that, that is not allowed. You see that up there? That that is just that is just bad, bad, bad news. Because what what these guys do is they put all of this on the floor. That's their job, right? But sometimes they do their job a little too well. Well, I'm going to keep an eye on that one because I can, right? I don't have to look behind me. I can look at my screen. <laughs> um, Anyway, so so um, 
yeah, um, they usually post the um, sort of the title of of the uh, of the show on Saturday, um, and I usually post a link to that over on my Discord um, server, which you can find a link to down in the description um, um, of this um, video. And uh, if sometimes if the title sounds interesting, it's like, okay, you know, I'll make sure to record that. Sometimes if the title doesn't, sa doesn't sound all that interesting, uh, then I'm sort of like, well, maybe I'll record it, and maybe I won't. You know, we'll see. Um, and sometimes it's like, oh, you know, I really um, want to record that, and I don't. And, um, and so um, this week was actually one of the ones where it's like, well, I think that sort of sounds interesting enough. I'll probably record it, and then I forgot. So um, Bobby was nice enough to um, play it over on his um, Rabbit channel um, last night. And, yeah, it was okay. It was okay. Um, not, not the best I've ever heard, not the worst I've ever heard. Um, and speaking of Bobby, hey there, Bobby. Nice to see you in the panel. Hey, what's up? How's everything going over there? Um, Aberdeen is fine and dandy. Just um, getting some random weather from Mother Nature and stuff. That random weather stuff is just, I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, I, uh, and, and in fact, what I should do is I should uh, pull up the chat here, too, just to make sure. Uncle Bill. Oh, I've got some background static with the mic cord. Okay, I will. I, I, I promise. I promise I will not touch the mic cord. I just won't. So, Let's see if my tab is cooperating and see if we got some information about why YouTube was down yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit um, curious as to, you know, why, and then um, 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 to what extent, because uh, I noticed actually just before um, I deleted the um, live stream from um, yesterday um, that Andy, Andy Cowley, uh, who I believe is over in Australia, I think, he was on there, um, so if he was on, maybe he wasn't having any any um, problems with um, YouTube over there. Uh, Hello. It's going to stare at me there. Okay. Yeah, she's just gonna she's gonna watch the whole show from the background. <laughs> oh, up. Oh. Up on the shoulder. Going to settle here? What? I don't know. She's a crazy kitty. Yeah, she's been doing that um, lately. She used to do that as a kitten, um, jump on my shoulder and then and then down. And she stopped for a little while, but just in the past week or so, she's decided that she's going to start that again. Now she likes to mess with cords, so I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep her at, at, at bay, but, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like herding cats, right? It's just, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, so hope everybody's doing, doing well out there. Yeah, you know, this is just a fun, casual get-together every single day, practically every single day, where, you know, um, um, just a bunch of friends um, get together on sort of a, a virtual porch, and we sit back with our our favorite consumables of, of choice. I've got some hydrogen hydroxide here tonight, gold HOH, and uh, yeah, so let's just sit back and think and talk um, astronomical things for a while. Um, you know, like I was looking at an article on CNBC. Um, they were saying that uh, that they didn't they didn't explain like why the issues 
was it was what 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 was what was happening and stuff. So they didn't release any information about that according to CNBC. It's 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 possible that they don't know yet, right? I mean, who who knows? Who knows? But uh, well, I'm glad I'm glad that it's back. I hope it wasn't uh, wasn't anything too serious. And uh, yeah, because you know this is a nice resource now. So so uh, you know to not. Um, have it would would uh, well you know that would not not be all that nice for a while at least so I believe yeah. we got some questions really unanswered Uncle Bill so maybe somebody um, um, pushed a bad update that's that's you know I mean those those kinds of things can happen, you know, and uh, yeah, you don't want them to, but but uh, definitely they definitely can. So cool. All right. Well, I've got got a kitty in the lap here, so all is well. She's just uh, sitting here staring at me, purring, and. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, maybe we should get get going. I think um, uh, you know I, I I wanted to finish up with Cetus tonight, the constellation of Cetus, um, and uh, I also wanted to maybe do a little bit of um, show and tell, a few more of my um, 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 book collection. When it comes to astronomy, um, some of the astronomy books that I've um, picked up over the years, usually for you know like school um, kinds of things, but but um, also just just you know general. Um, and these are pretty. I mean, these these are heavy heavy books, right? I mean, um, not only in terms of of, of weight. But in terms of content, they are they are heavy, heavy. So, well, let's see. Let's um, let's let's get Cetus out of the way. The other thing that I wanted to, to um, just kind of skim over um, is is this uh, is this um, next generation um, VLA um, concept. Hey there, Tom. Running late. Ah. Okay. Well, cool. So yeah. let's. Uh, yeah, so YouTube is not releasing any information as of yet. Yeah. Yeah. They. They'll have to do an investigation. Hopefully. Hopefully. You know. I mean. Do we need to know? Mm, probably not. You know. That sort of. That would be a courtesy, right? That sort of be a nice thing you know, to let us know what what um, transpired. But but um, you as long know, as the, it would have been like great if somebody would put the love bug from the Y two K era into the YouTube and really wiped everything out, videos and system and all. Oh yeah, that would be really really great. <laughs> Well, there's no competition, but but um, but it's trying to get the people into that competition. Yeah, true, true. There is competition out there, for sure, for sure. All right, well, cool. Let's uh, let's move over to see this really. Well, not exactly quickly, but uh, let's just sort of finish up with see this here. Uh, let's see, where was it? Way back here. So, I think we've looked at pretty much everything. Um, there, you know, um, Burnham's showed a bunch of different galaxies, and it's an absolute fact that there are there are just tons and tons and tons of galaxies in this thing, um, in this constellation. 
Um, but one of the interesting ones that at least um, Wikipedia sort of shows is this Holm Holmberg 15A. And I'm thinking what I want to try to do is um, this this um, galaxy is a um, is um, part of a galaxy cluster, and it's sort of the central primary um, galaxy in this cluster called Abel eighty five. And so I think what I'm sort of interested in in doing is let's let's try to um, take a look at Abel. Um, 85 and see what it's all about and then we can sort of go from from there um, Holmberg um, 15a is kind of interesting um, on its own uh, it's got this uh, supposedly supermassive black hole which um, some estimates are that it has a mass of like you know, as much as 310 billion solar masses. <laughs> so one, you know, one object uh, is 310 billion times the mass of our sun. Uh, that's that's uh, that's a that's a lot of mass. Yeah. So you know, those kinds of numbers. You know, even even on the low end, right? 10 billion. Uh, I don't know those those large numbers. I don't know. In my head, they they just sort of throw up a red flag, and it's like, really, really, not quite sure, not quite sure. So you know, um, lots of um, 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 lots of estimates, lots of estimates. Um, and kind of hard to tell, right? But um, pretty interesting anyway. Um, but yeah, let's see if we can find anything about Abel 85. I guess we're not going to find anything that way. Let's go to... Um, uh, let's go to Simbad. Simbad is a great, great, great resource for all astronomical objects. You know, not only um, galaxies and you know, clusters and, and nebulae and all that, but um, just just um, plain old stars, right? I mean, if you want to um, get all kinds of useful information about just any old star, right? This is the place to find it. So let's let's look at Abel eighty five, right? Is that what it was? Yeah, Abel 85. I don't know if it's going to come up in... Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Nice. So, uh, let's see. Okay, well, sort of the usual kinds of information. It's, of course, in the constellation of um, Cetus, so it's going to have a right ascension. And a declination that, of course, is in that um, constellation. Uh, not saying much more. It's got a, a huge radial um, velocity, 16,000 kilometers per second. Wow, that's, uh, that's screaming. That is definitely screaming. Let's, um, let's go right to the picture here. So this is a, uh, what is this? Is, I guess this is the Sloan um, Digital Sky Survey. Yeah. Let's zoom out a little bit and see see what we've got here. Oh, that's pretty. So there's, there's the cluster, I guess. Don't really know uh, to what extent, you know, which... Which of these objects are members of this cluster of galaxies? 
But this one looks pretty big. I wonder if that's uh I wonder if that's the Holmberg fifteen what was it? Holmberg um fifteen A? Don't know. That's sort of the biggest one I see here, but what do I know? So a couple ellipticals. Kind of a funny looking spiral there. That's probably a star. See this one here? That's probably a star. That's probably a star, too. Uh, kind of a nice little um, cluster. They're all, you know, all these galaxies are, you know, they look more or less the same size and more or less you know, sort of the same um, brightness. So that sort of implies that they're about the same um, distance away from us. So that's kind of nice. Let's sort of look around here. Yeah, you really don't, not really seeing much of anything else. So this is definitely a cluster. Ooh, there's some, there's a nice, a nice galaxy there. But yeah, that is definitely a cluster of galaxies for sure. For sure. I wonder if, um, let's just, um, let's see if we can get a positive ID on home, Homeberg 15A. Ooh, not there. Hmm. Let's try Joel M. Nope. Got the got the acronyms here, but I'm not quite sure how to use these. Let's uh Hmm. Don't really know oh, oh, oh okay. It says not yet in Simbad. Wow. Something that's not in Simbad? That's impossible. <laughs> Alright, well, let's let's go back to uh Abel 85 then. Sort of. There's a bunch of different names, of course. Even um, clusters of galaxies have um, different names. Let's see, they've got some measurements of velocities here. Let's. Uh, okay, so these are all um, um, measurements of redshift. Measurements of redshift, which. Um, uh, I'm gonna have to remind myself how to how to read that to interpret those numbers. Let's find out. Let's find out. Dun, 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 dun. Um, medical derivation. Let's see, what we want is the actual redshift value. Okay, so the values that, that we see here are the values of z, right? So here's z, so 1 plus z equals all of this. Uh, Okay, so that's gravitational redshift. What we want is... Uh, I have to remind myself about all of these things. I'll get back to you on that one. Let's, uh, let's keep going. These are generally pretty consistent, though. Right? Pretty, you know, pretty consistent, so that's not bad. That's not too bad. Lots of references. I'm uh, surprised. Let's uh, let's take a quick a quick look. Um, I wonder if, uh, if Holmberg is in here. Holmberg, there it is. Too big to be real. No depleted core in Holm 15A. Okay. 
Oh, that's the only mention of Holmberg 15A in this whole in this whole thing. So let's uh, let's. I'd, I'd like to sort of get a positive ID on on the object itself. It looks like that's probably it. I'm looking at the pictures here. And we can go back to this. Whoop. Go back to here. Quite a few uh, references for sure. Let's see. Zoom out a little bit. Because, as I said, my my guess is is that that's Holmberg 15A. That's my that's my wild guess. But let's see if we can get a some kind of visual confirmation here. Um, so this is taken with um, CFHT, which I believe is on the island of Hawaii, if I remember right. This is the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope. And as you recall, we... I think we looked at that ago, a while ago, maybe a couple of months ago. They are converting it to to be just a spectrometer. They're just going to be doing um, spectroscopy with it, as I recall. But yeah, so let's see. There's so here's here's the main, and then here's a little galaxy here. Here's a little galaxy here. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. So this big dude right here is Holmberg 15A, which supposedly, right, supposedly has this, this super, super, super massive um, black hole um, somewhere between 10 billion and 300 billion solar masses. So, well, okay, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. That, you know, like I said, those... Those kinds of things sort of throw up a red flag in my head. Just, just, uh, um, and that's just an intuitive thing that 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 isn't um, sort of based based on anything I either know or don't know. It's just that, that's a big number, that, you know. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, there it is. There it is. Cool. Cool. That is definitely it. All right. Cool. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. All right, so that is Abel 85. And, and, you know, in truth, like I said, I'm not exactly sure which, which ones of these are members and which ones aren't. Um, I, I want to say that Abel 85 is pretty far away. Um, it say anything about that here? Uh, it doesn't say anything about that here. I think it was pretty far, though. Maybe, does it say here? Um, so 700 million light years from, from Earth. That's pretty far. That's pretty far. That That is definitely not, you know... In the neighborhood, that's that's pretty far out there. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Cool. Cetus is a is a is a huge constellation, and there's so much. There's just there's an incredibly large amount of of things um, in this constellation for for sure. So uh, yeah, you know, I, we've just sort of skimmed the top. Uh, in terms of what's going on there. So, all right, I'm going to uh, stop sharing, and I'm going to grab the chat really quick, make sure there isn't too much excitement. Oh, so, Rael, hey there, Rael. Nice to see you in the chat as, as well. Cool, so the old astronomy book that you've got... Um, is the Earth and Sky Marvels of Astronomy. 
That's cool. Haven't heard of that one. Um, very cool, though. Very, very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, here. Uh, like I said, I think uh, I think I should show off a couple of the astronomy books that I've I've sort of accumulated over the years here. Watch it at my half cat hair. Oh, I'm used to that. I'm used to that, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, cool. So uh, this one I've had for a long, long, long time. Now, the date that I have on this is the, is the 22nd of July, 1993. So that's... That's probably about when I got this book, and it's it's this one, Astrophysical Concepts by Martin um, Harwood. Great, great, great book. Great book, expensive book. I think this, I don't remember exactly now, but back in 1993... I think this was something like 130 bucks or so for this book. It's it's like I said it's it's a very heavy book and as you can see it's oh it's it's about an inch and a half thick or so. Let's see how many pages it's got in it. It's just I'm just going to look at the page number of the last page. Uh 626. 626 pages, um, but this covers uh, most astronomical um, topics. And actually, this is the um, second edition that I've got here. So let's see. This was. Um, uh, let's see. Can I? Huh. Okay. So. Okay, so it says that the first edition was published in 1973, reprinted and published in 1982, and then this version is copyright 1988. 1988. So when I got this book, this was like five years old or so. So, you know... Most of this is very, very relevant um, today because, you know, I mean, a lot of concepts don't don't change. But, so, yeah, let me just read the, uh, I'm going to read the chapters. Let's see, there are, ooh, how many? So it looks like there's 12 chapters and then there's two appendices. So let's see here. So chapter one um, is an approach to um, astrophysics. So that just sort of, you know, lays everything out. Um, um, X-ray astronomy, um, physical laws, formation of stars, evolution of stars, um, all that. Chapter two is the um, cosmic distance scale and you know, the various means by which we have of trying to measure um, distances. We've got um, trigonometric parallax, spectroscopic um, parallax, the moving cluster method. Hmm. Um, 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 variable stars. Um, yeah, kind of cool. Okay, so um, chapter three is the dynamics and masses of astronomical bodies. So, you know, the concept of mass, Kepler's laws, um, the two-body problem, measures of time, galactic rotation, um, the varial theorem. Um, yeah, so chapter four is entitled Random processes. So 
random events, random walk, um, the motion of molecules, um, um, atmospheric density, phase space, the Saha equation. The Saha equation. Wow, that brings me back. Yeah, the Saha equation. Ugh. Let's see. So chapter five is um, photons and fast particles. Um, so talking about you know relativity and the Doppler effect. Um, Chapter six is um, the electromagnetic um, processes in space. So yeah, you know, um, despite um, what you might might hear, right? Uh, there are there there are you know lots of electrical and magnetic fields um, in space. Um, you know, ninety nine um, percent of of matter. Um, is in this form called plasma, um, and plasma is far from neutral uh, and is um, very very charged. So, and most of the matter in the um, 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 universe is a plasma. So, uh, so yeah, makes sense. Let's see. So, chapter seven: um, quantum um, processes in astrophysics. Chapter 8 is all about stars, uh, sources of stellar energy, relaxation times, equations of state, compact stars, white dwarf stars, um, um, neutron stars. Cool. So chapter 9, um, um, cosmic gas and dust, Stromgren spheres. That's uh, bringing me back. Star formation. Chapter 10 is called Structure of the Universe. Talking about Olber's paradox and the creation of matter, the topology of the universe, the flow of time. Um, chapter 11 is entitled Life, um, Life in the Universe. Chapter 12 is Cosmic Origins. So yeah, you know, trying to understand, uh, trying to understand how this all got going. Which is a mystery, for sure, for sure. Cool, and then, uh, yeah, um, two appendices, as I said. One is um, terminology that's used, and then a bunch of constants, um, astrophysical constants. Let's see, that's 594. Let's see what kind of astrophysical con constants they're talking about here. Go all the way back to the, the back of the book here. Okay, well, there's just a few. And uh, <laughs> I actually wrote one in here, too, which... Oh, I actually wrote in two. So, yeah, here's here's all the uh, here's all the constants, I guess. And as you can see, I I wrote in one coulomb here, and I also wrote in one 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 erg. So, yeah, for some reason, I thought that. I needed to add that. Oh, okay. And the electron charge. Um, okay, they, yeah, they put those in sort of weird, weird units, which I don't even know what those are anymore. E, ESUs. So the electron charge is four point eight times ten to the minus tenth ESUs. Uh, electrostatic units. Not quite sure, but I've 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 been converted that to coulombs. So you have a unit of charge instead. So excellent, excellent, excellent book. I mean, you know, definitely not for the faint of heart, right? Uh, 
heavy, heavy, heavy math. Uh, but pretty interesting. And, you know, if you want to get into astronomy, right, you got to start. You got to start here. Um, but it, you know, uh, as with most things, it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort, and a lot of head scratching, right? Because there's, uh, I'm trying to see if I can find some, uh, find some interesting, uh, and this yeah. is like a uh, textbook, right? Yeah, yeah. This is sort of a, I don't know, I guess I would call it sort of a upper level um, 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 undergraduate um, textbook or so. But yeah, you can sort of see the... A little bit of heavy math there, not too bad, you know. But you got to know vectors, and you got to know calculus, and and you got to know um, differential equations, and and uh, and um, um, vector calculus, and and all that. It's it's uh, so pretty heavy stuff, but um, great, great, great book, great, great, great book. Um, not not necessarily casual reading though. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, a good one. Sure. So, here's another one that I picked up. Okay, well, I picked this one up about a year, a year later, right? That says uh, 15th of November, 1994. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's not focusing. But, um, and this one's called Spherical Astronomy. And this is really, really nice because it, it uh, sort of gets you used to thinking um, in terms of, of you know, three-dimensional things, right? You know, that space, um, that space isn't, isn't this, this, this flat object, right? But it's actually, you know, a um, three-dimensional thing. And so most of this book is just spherical trigonometry. I'm going to try to focus here. Sorry, I'm going to... There we go. Okay. Um, so um, spherical trig. So again, you know, sort of heavy math. But um, if you're going to get into these kinds of things, then... This is at least one of the books, one of the good ones, I would say. Um, she uh, she lays it all out really, really well. Lots, lots of pictures, um, and like I said, lots and lots of math too. So let's see. There's a bunch of chapters here too. Um, so basic um, um, formulas. Then she gets into the celestial sphere. Um, there's a chapter here called the reference frame. Um, geocentric coordinates. Let's see. Um, direct measurements of um, right ascension and um, declination. Um, um, chapter six, um, orbital motion. Chapter 7, um, Planetary and Satellite Orbits. Chapter 8 is um, Heliocentric and Barycentric Coordinates. Um, so heliocentric, of course, is um, sun-centered. And barycentric is usually the, um, the um, center of mass between objects. Uh, let's see. Um, precession, Nutation. Time. There's a whole chapter on time, um, and like I say, you know, time time is really, really, really important um, 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 when it comes to astronomy. Having a good good grasp of of being able to measure time um, is pretty fundamental, pretty important. 
um, proper motion, um, radial velocity, um, coordinates, um, um, astrographic plate measurements. So I think that has to do um, um, with astrometry, right? Measuring, measuring the positions of objects on what, what at that time at least um, would have been a photographic plate. Uh, let's see, chapter 14, um, stellar distances and movements. Um, 15, um, the elements of radio astronomy. Oh, I'm going to have to look into that a little bit. Um, and then, um, let's see, chapter 16 um, is... Um, 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 radio... Um, 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 astrometry. Um, so radio astrometry. So measuring the positions of things using radio light as opposed to you know other kinds of of light. That's kind of cool. Um, planetary um, phenomena. Um, eclipses and occultations and binary stars. And then there are three appendices, um, tensors. Um, here's another um, list of all the astronomical constants. And then they actually have the answers to all the questions. So again, you know, this is sort of like a textbook. And so I think, let's, let's confirm this probably at the end of every maybe at the end of every chapter yeah at the end of every chapter they have a, a list of problems so you know these are just uh, you know problems that would be assigned the student and uh, you have to uh, you have to try to um, figure them out. And uh, so, yeah, you know, some good exercises there for, for that. And, and uh, I got to admit, I haven't cracked open um, this book in quite a while. But I saw it up on the shelf, and it's like, oh, yeah, I should, uh, I should um, show that off a little bit and, and um, pull it out and uh, take a look at it again. And it uh, reminds me that there are actually some topics in here that I probably should look at a little. Going to settle here or, or what? Huh? She's very unsettled. I know what she wants to do here. Just chewing on wires. Anyway, so let's see. This this guy, this book was published in. Da, 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 da. Well, it was reprinted. Reprinted in 1993. So so I got this pretty new then. Yeah. And I would say pretty much everything in this book is still incredibly relevant. Um. Yeah. You know, measuring the positions of things in the sky and all of that and how they move, that's not going to change. That is definitely not, not going to change. So, yeah, nice, nice book. Like I said, you know, nice diagrams like that to help us out, trying to understand what's going on there. So, yeah, very, very cool. Uh, let's see, is there any other? Okay, yeah. yeah. There's the cosine formula, the sine f formula. Oh, I'm remembering all that, yeah. Yeah, so another good book. I think pretty expensive, too. I don't remember exactly how much this one was. It's probably at least 50 bucks, though.
So cheers to spherical astronomy. And lastly, just for tonight, I've got a three volume set. And they're all called. I'm hearing a lot of echo there, um, Bobby. Sorry about that. Um, but they're all called Introduction intro, Introduction to Stellar Astrophysics. And if this is an introduction, I want to know uh, what's next. <laughs> because these, these three books, there are three volumes, right? This first one is what called um, um, basic um, um, stellar observations and data. The next one, which is actually the only one that I use as a textbook, is called Stellar Atmospheres. And this, the, uh, the reason why I actually grabbed this one, and then I remembered I had these other two, was because this is a great book um, when you want to learn um, spectroscopy. This is really, really, really a great book. This this lays it all out um, and um, um, can tell you, you know, what you can actually see in those really, really um, complicated spectra. Um, these are all the kinds of things you know, that you can measure um, with that. Anyway, great one there. And then volume three is Stellar Structure and Evolution. So if you want to know about stars and how they work, um, I highly recommend this, this set. Um, and, you know, like I say, you know, I kind of laugh at, at this thing being, you know, sort of um, introduction to it because uh, this is some pretty, pretty heavy concept stuff. Um, yeah, like I said, this, um, the second, um, volume here really gets into spectroscopy, um, pretty intensely, and, uh, it's, it's complicated, right? It's really, really, really hard, hard stuff. I remember, um, um, being a student and, and really struggling with all of this, um, but uh, yeah, you have you've got to um, figure it out if you want to uh, know what's going on with all these guys. So, and again, you know, there's a bunch of chapters, um, but like I said, you know, the second um, volume is is mainly dealing with you know the interpretation and measurement um, of spectra. Uh, specifically of, of stars, but, you know, spectroscopy um, um, can um, pretty much apply to, to, to all objects. Okay, so uh, Ray L., the astronomy advance I have gone to, I found out if you get to tech with it, um, all, all it scares some people off. They just want to look through the telescope. Some take it further, some don't. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. The the uh, you know, I mean, if you get um too deep into things, uh, you know, the concepts, you know, start to fly over everybody's heads, and and uh, and that's no fun. Let's try to focus again. This th this thing is uh is really misbehaving tonight. Yeah, look, it won't even focus on my hand. Let's see. There it goes. All right, yay. <laughs> yay. So, but, you know, um, I think having, having a nice library um, of um, these kinds of books, for me at least, when, when I want to understand 
things. I sort of, you know, these are the sources, right? These are the books um, I'll go to, 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 to really, really, really understand, uh, you know, what's being um, um, t talked about and, and, uh, and all that. Because, you know, I mean, these obviously lay out a pretty good explanation too. It's just, you know, it's sort of, uh, like I said, you know, I mean, it's pretty heavy math and, you know, the concepts are complicated, right? Um, but that's one of the cool things um, about um, 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 these astronomical topics is that, is that, you know, one can sort of approach them at, at many uh, levels, right? You can, you know, talk about all the high-level stuff, and then you can start to dive. And um, you can dive pretty much as deep as you want, and there's always more. Always, always, always more. So, yeah, great books. Again, these, these books are, like, really expensive. <laughs> I don't remember... Uh, I don't know if there's a. Okay, well, yeah. See, I got this book back in 1990. So, what is that? That's uh, 28 years. Is that right? Wow. Okay, so I've had this book for 28 years. Uh, yeah. I don't remember how much it was, but as I recall, this guy. This guy was definitely expensive, and they all, they all are, and it's sort of a bummer too because I mean they're not very big books, right? I mean, let's see, volume two, which is the one I used in a class, two hundred and forty-five pages, right? So not much, and I'm thinking that this was like a hundred bucks or so. So, of course, one is not paying for the paper or the ink, right? That's, that's sort of the cheap part. What you're paying for is, is the information and the knowledge, um, which is, uh, well, you know, almost priceless. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm forking out some big, big, big bucks for these books it was just uh, painful, painful. But uh, but that's that's um, um, one of the reasons why I've um, kept them too, because you know it's an investment, right? And I mean I knew then that I was going to stay in astronomy, so I I knew you know that these guys would be incredibly valuable, you know, forever. Um, and I think for the most part, most of the information in these have pretty much held up. Um, you know, this is sort of, I guess, you know, as the title says, it's an introduction. This is sort of the, the basic stuff. Um, now, like, how, about, how much did you pay for your tuition for per semester? Uh, back when... I was going, it was actually uh, astonishingly cheap. I, I, I want to say, I think my last, I think the last semester I was there, I think I was paying like, like maybe 2500 or so. I don't, I don't know if that was for a semester or for a year. I'm not exactly sure. When I started, it was, it was, uh, it was um, 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 very, very cheap. Um, I got to say that, you know, if I were to be going into college now, I could have never afforded it at all. No way. No way. Because um, I paid my own way. Either. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's gotten insanely, insanely expensive. So, um, but yeah, you know, um, a really, really, really great place to find um, 
some great astronomy books is used bookstores. So if you have any at all, um, go visit them. And you know, they usually have you know, like the science um, section. Um, and and uh, you may you know, find some jewels. Uh, definitely look for Burnham's, right? Um, Burnham's uh, is, is a little old and um, dated. But again, you know, most of the information there is entirely relevant. You know, the history of the stars or, or you know, whatever, right? I mean, that's not going to change much. Now, just out of my curiosity, are there any astronomy magazines that, that people can just pick up from the newsstands? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, um, uh, there, there are two that come to mind. Um, Sky and Telescope. Um, which has been going for a long, long, long time. Um, and um, 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 it's Astronomy Magazine, yeah. Um, so yeah, those two uh, should, should they are the, those are usually on um, newsstands. Um, I don't, and, and those are ones that are in the United States. You're going to have to, you know, if you're in Europe or in Australia, ah, you're going to have to look around. I'm not exactly sure what is available there. So I'm, I'm sort of saying in terms of United States, um, 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 like Astronomy Magazine and Sky and Telescope uh, are sort of the two main ones. Um, if you want to get into any of the journals or anything, um, uh, uh, I think most libraries still have those, but you're going to have to go to a library to get them. Yeah. Um, or, of course, all the online um, so, um, um, resources now. Uh, that is probably your best bet. For sure. So, yeah. Okay, well, that was just a few more of the astronomy books that I've I've got. I've got some um, I you know, I'm sort of looking around at my bookshelves here. I've got a f I've got a few more. Um yeah, I'll have to pull a few more out at some point here at least. But yeah, lots and lots and lots of good good books. What I say is is, you know, Go to a used bookstore or even a new um, bookstore. Um, go to the astronomy section or the science um, section, and and uh, you know, read the titles. Um, you know, grab them off the shelf and sort of you know thumb um, through them a little bit. If they look interesting, grab it. Right, pay for it. You probably want to pay for it. And and uh, you know, take a look. Um, there, I don't really think that there are are um, necessarily any any bad ones. You know, ones that are sort of gonna you know lead you in the wrong um, direction or, or anything. Most of them are really really interesting. So you know, um, 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 whatever you think is sort of you know. Um, um, fascinating um, to you um, what you want to find out um, more about grab it take a read see what you can get out of it yeah so yeah lots and lots and lots of good ones for for sure for sure well all right you guys I think I'm going to get out of here for today it looks like we're a couple of minutes over the hour, and uh, yeah, uh, if I get into anything else, it's going to be a little bit longer. So I'll just, I will just hold off. Um, that's one of the nice things about having a daily live stream is that you know things that aren't covered and talked about today, we can talk about them tomorrow or the next day or next week or next month, right? Um, uh, yeah. Of course, of course, um, Carl Sagan's um, Cosmos. If you don't have the book, 
um, get get at least the book. Um, and if you can get a hold of the series, for sure. Now I know that Twitch um, uh, is is constantly showing um, Cosmos, the original um, Cosmos. Uh, so if you go over to Twitch dot um, TV and search for Cosmos, I think you will find it there. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. You got to have that that book. Yeah, I've I've even got the soundtrack, Ray. So yeah, I've got I've got the book, I've got the DVD set, and I've got the soundtrack. So uh, yeah, I'm covered there. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm going to get out of here for now. So thanks for um, um, coming in again, taking a look at a few of these um, books I've got here. I, uh, I definitely don't crack these open as much as I want to, but I know that they're there. So, so uh, um, uh, actually, Ray, that's not a bad idea. You know, the theme song to... Um, um, Cosmos is a is a um, 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 Vangelis song, and uh, it's uh, it's a beautiful song, of course. Um, pretty easy to play too. So uh, yeah, maybe at some point uh, I will uh, either um, play it I think live Vangelis here. Did a heck of a lot for that Cosmos series. Yeah, yeah. There's um, there's several um, Vangelis songs um, on the Cosmo series, for sure, for sure. And you know, um, Vangelis you can find all all over music from the hearts of space too, all over the place. Yeah, because My it is. My favorite Vangelis song is called Alpha. Alpha. Yeah. I think. I think. Isn't that the theme song to Cosmos? Isn't that it? No, I think the theme song is called Heaven and Hell. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Alpha. Yeah. Does that go? Dun, 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 dun. Is that it? I don't remember. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, I'm going to get out of here for now. So um, take care, everybody. Thanks for coming in. Make sure to hit the thumbs up or the thumbs down, whichever you prefer. You can make some comments, subscribe, spread the word. It's all things astronomy here. Uh, yeah. Every single day, same time, two hours UTC, same place, right here, right here. All right. So um, take care, everybody. I will see you in one Earth spin. In fact, a little bit less. Yeah. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Later.